Bruce Lawn. Talk a little bit about the Equality Act a little bit more. I just want yeah. to ask you a question. Yeah, go for it. Uh, on your thoughts. So I'm not super worried about it. I did enough research now to feel better about it. But do you think it has any potential ramification on the church? And then there's one uh, potential thing that I think that could protect the church. But I just want to know your thoughts as far as like the church, like as far as like gatherings and uh, services, do you think it has any yeah. bearing on? I think so. I think it, anything could have ramifications on these things, right? So yeah, for sure. I know my pastor, and we don't go to like this like hardcore like religious right. We're gonna you know be known in the community for going up and doing signs and protests. Like that's not the energy my church is on at all. But I know my pastor has told me that they have gotten calls. Uh, that just seems super suspect about certain folks wanting to get married at our church. You know what I mean? And our church is very like, like we have uh, folks from all lifestyles that, that attend our church. I'm, I'm being careful with the language I use for the sake of the monetization. Sure. Right? <laughs> and so, um, so in, in specifically with that, yeah, I think there's the possibility. Um, but the, the, as Christians, we're talking about being sober minded, Right. I, I think right. it, we have to also not be hysterical when the world does what the world does, right? When 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 spiritually dead people act like spiritually dead people, and it could have ramifications. Not that it's going to have ramifications, but it could have ramifications. I think we have to be careful to not be like, ah, it's the end of the church as we know it. Like, right. <laughs> and that's just a lot of times the energy that comes out. And I was trying to research this truth, but I remember there was a line. Um, 2005, 2006, where we, uh, in California, there was a law changed about saying certain things were sinful in California mm -hmm. and more or less, we just didn't follow it. Like, you know right. what I mean? Like, like laws that are not commonsensical and are in unenforceable will sometimes just get ignored. Now, can there be a situation where some person with an agenda and a chip on their shoulder wants to get a church caught up because they didn't perform such and such ceremony? Yes, that's totally possible. Um, right. My opinion would be like, yo, if you're out here in a community, loving Jesus, loving people, doing the right thing, can it ha Yeah, sure, it can happen. Is it going to happen to every church? No, and I think that's sometimes the overreaction and the hysteria and the right, right? And, and I think that is just as unhelpful because again, we're called to be sober minded. We're also so that to me would say don't be caught up in your emotions and be full of fear and and and, and anxiety and perpetuate nonsense and act like the, this is the end of the church or the end of the world. Um, and a whole other thing is like this whole notion that like we can lose our tax exemption status, right? Like. Um, yeah, that that's, doesn't end the church. Churches can lose their tax no. exemption status in America. That doesn't end the church, guys. Um, you just don't get to write off your uh, giving to the church. And even that, you have to hit a certain threshold to give away more than the whatever amount they give. Like, you have to give away, I think, more than like 20 grand a year to hit the threshold where that even makes a difference in the average person's pockets. You know what I mean? And, and mm -hmm. so, so if we lose the tax exemption status, like, that doesn't end the church. You know what I mean? So... Right. I agree with you on that. Yeah. I, I just wanted to kind of see where you were, you were at with that. I've been reading up on it. Cause what did you I'm learn that you didn't know initially? Because I am curious that you've been reading up on it. What are some things that you learned yeah. that you didn't think about initially? Well, what I learned was that it's going to it's going to put a lot of people in a position like we're already hearing. If you look in the news on um, it was an adoption agency that changed. Uh, it's a Christian adoption agency. The biggest one in this country changed up their language to uh, allow children to go to people of whoever, yes. you know, yeah, yeah, same yeah. sex, whatever, yeah. it doesn't matter yep. for them anyway. They changed their language as a result, um, expecting this bill to be, or this act to be passed. So some Christian uh, organizations are beginning to kind of already say like, okay, we're just going to go move forward so that we can still be able to serve the greater good mm -hmm. and not be completely, I guess, dismantled. Uh, and then the other thing, so I did learn that a lot will be affected and some are already adjusting where they feel that they can make give up a little bit of leeway to be able to still serve a greater good but then the other thing that i learned as i was researching the civil rights act which is what they're essentially adding to uh i did learn that we do have certain 
protections that come from the First Amendment. And one of those is the ministerial exception. And I okay. think that potentially could guard our churches. So like essentially what's going to happen now, this is why I think churches are going to be affected. But I think if churches are smart, this won't matter. Mm -hmm. One thing that you can argue with churches is uh, with the ministerial exception is you don't have to marry who you don't want to marry. You have to you can choose that leeway and the, the government has no right to infringe on who you choose to marry who you don't. Same thing with uh, who you who you want in your church to pass? Like, if you want to have somebody in the clergy or sure. someone serving in a church, there is a ministerial exception that is extended from the First Amendment, which should protect most church institutions. Now, what won't be protected in the church is things that are, I guess you could say, agnostic, like a janitor or ah. a, a photographer or certain positions. So if you have certain positions that you put out to the open and you find out they're from one of the communities in which the Equality Act will protect, then they can make a case against you because that has nothing to do with religious, uh, the religious function. So they yeah. will you are susceptible to that. So like for our big elevation church, those big churches we got out there yep. that have people who they may hire, who they don't really care are Christian, but may realize that they are part of one of these communities. Uh, they can't discriminate against them. So that's interesting. Okay. So that, so thank you for clarifying that. That's really interesting. So my, so my thought would be this, my thought would be, you'd really have to have a chip on your shoulder if you're from one of those communities intentionally trying to go and get hired at a church, you're trying to make a point and, and or you're intentionally trying to get caught, get the church caught up. Right. So you're really trying to go out of the way. So so I think is that possible for sure? And are there people out there that are on that energy for sure? Um I would like to give folks the benefit of the doubt and they said that they're the minority in these situations and not the majority, right? The majority right. of people, I think, just want to live and let live and be left alone. However, um, my, my solution would be, hey, if your church is known for loving and serving the community and doing a killer job at feeding people and outreach and all these different things, right? Um, I, I don't know... The person going after you would just look like a jerk, in my opinion, right? And we've had yeah. this stuff happen with the cakes and so on and so forth. It's not like stuff doesn't happen. It does. Um, but I think it's I think it's less common than we think it is. And I think when we then take those situations and make them the overall arching theme for right. someone from that community wants to go in yeah. and be a photographer at an elevation church. Like, first of all, what are the odds that someone actually wants that? Second of mm -hmm. all, like are you, is there no way to not hire that person without openly discriminating against them? Right. Oh, sorry. The position's been filled. Right. And then they're going to, well, they're going to escalate and go. Over and be that was my thought too. Like, yeah. that, like you'd have to be pretty outright disrespectful and like not operating out of love to even get caught for something like that. That is that explicit that you didn't hire a person because of that. Now, the only other situations like marriage, all we explicitly didn't. My thought is, you know, as a pastor, and I don't know, I haven't been a lead pastor, but I've been an associate pastor. But my thought is, I don't have to marry someone just because they want me to marry them, right. regardless. You don't got to marry a heterosexual couple. Yeah. Like if I that think y'all are in sin and y'all need to break up for a season or whatever, like you don't got to marry nobody. Like that's, you get to use that discretion. Yeah. My pastor initially, the, the my, my, like my pastor right now wouldn't marry me and my wife. Like he was busy or whatever he had going on. I was, my feelings was kind of hurt. You know what I'm saying? 13 <laughs> years later, me and my right. wife are doing great. Me and my pastor are doing great. But for whatever reason, he didn't want to marry us. He married Belief and Yvette. He didn't want to marry us. And I don't like hold that against him. You know what I mean? And the, the pastor that married us is actually the pastor from my wife's church. So a pastor doesn't have to marry anybody, you know? Yeah, exactly. So that's why, and I, that's why I brought this up mainly because I know uh, we have a lot of Christians that are just worried and we have a lot of like distort distortion when it comes to like how bad, like, I don't think this is good. Don't get me wrong. This is pretty bad. It's way overreaching in how like there is other things like the and campaign has uh, the Fairness for All Act that they're promoting. That is a better version of this, which does protect uh, religious you know, people from religious backgrounds. And it's currently being implemented in, I think, Utah, where the Mormons actually got together with people from these communities and other religions. And they came to a consensus on this is how we should put together legislation to deal with these matters. So there's actually a precedent set that has been that has been discussed already hmm. that we could adopt on a federal level that may be better. Uh, I think that 
this one, the issue with this is it doesn't allow for Christians to basically, if you have certain person, you know, conviction, some personal, some like very serious matters, you won't be allowed to provide things that the government deems general services. And some of which may not be general. Like, I don't know if abortion is it's it's kind of, it gets gets difficult when you talk about doctors having to perform abortion if they want to uphold if a hospital wants to uphold their um government support and things like that or even the adoption agency example mm. for some Christians can be uncomfortable it's like oh you have to you know adopt people to a families where they have you know people from those communities and things like that where it's like okay you're asking okay is this a healthy home for them from a christian worldview would you consider this a healthy home i don't know how that looks i don't know how you would make the determination i'm not saying one way or the other mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not saying that you couldn't but from a christian worldview would you look at that as confusion to the kid mm-hmm. and so that's that sure. these aren't easy situations that i think yeah. believers are going to be in in They're these not. areas so yeah. they not and, and we don't live in an easy world and we live in a world where mm-hmm. you know we're around people who hold different views on, on certain things. And um, it, I think it is what it is. I think, right. uh, I think I, I'm just like, I'm just be cautious. That's what I would say. It's like, yo, I think we probably should just be cautious uh, in the same way that I'm going to speak the truth on YouTube. But at the same time, I'm going to be cautious with what I put in the titles, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> or what, thumb, th- uh, what, what hashtags I use. I, th- I think it's the same thing. Like Jesus right. said, I'm sending you out. Um, like, uh, like uh, he said, I'm sending you out like sheep amongst wolves. And he said, I want you to be wise as serpents and innocent as doves, right? So mm-hmm. uh, shrewd as serpents, innocent as doves. So I think there's something to that where if we think about, and the world back then was way worse than the world now is, by the way, just in case you're wondering, like Rome way worse against Christians, way worse, like completely, utterly different, right? Just read 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and look at the kind of stuff that they were celebrating in the church. So um, if if we understand that they lived in a world that was hostile to their belief, and yet the church thrived more than ever, um, I think it's really wild for us to be this freaked out about every little thing that happens with regards to equality of folks of different worldviews or different uh, positions or whatever. So I, again, I'm always thinking abundance. I'm always thinking the Imago Day and other people, yeah. meaning that um, someone could disagree with my worldview. Someone could disagree with the fact that I'm a Christian. However, if they know that I'm adding good to the to the world, and this is by and large my relationships with most of my non-Christian friends, if they know I'm adding value to the world, they more or less want to see me win, even if they don't believe in the same God, even if they're hostile to my faith, right? Um, I actually catch more flack from hyper religious people in my life or, or, or fo- folks in, on the fringes of certain things on certain camps yeah. than I do from non-Christians. And so that's like, I don't know, like, I think we keep making people the enemy who are, exactly. um, who are just out here trying to do their thing and they, they're looking for some degree yeah. of protection. So I don't know. I just, I, this is just not stuff I'm super, and I'm not saying it can't you know, persecution can't happen or whatever. It's the same thing happened when um, the, the the marriage passed, like the marriage law passed. Everybody's like, this is going to make churches, <laughs> force churches to do this. And it's like 10 years later, and there was one or two situations that went national, like straight up, like this isn't massive. The world came to an end because this thing passed. It was like, yo, there was one exactly. one bakery that went out of business because they wouldn't make the cake. Like that most I people of. by and large, yeah, most people by and large don't go with or not accept it. So it's not nearly it's as big sense. of a deal. Yeah, it's not as big of a deal as people make it out to be. But I, I think everything you're saying is good. Um, yeah, I think it's. I think everything you're saying makes sense, and I agree with it. I think that's what I'm hoping that we as a church can kind of understand is that yeah, like you know, a lot of Christians are like, well, they're setting the conditions in place for us to hit the last days. I'm like, well, that's what we expect. I mean, it's yeah. like, we should expect that. Now, that doesn't mean we just sit back and allow it to happen. We we got to be a the voice, you know, of the Lord crying in the wilderness, you know, preparing your way for the Lord. Like, we want to make sure people are able to receive all God has for them yes. to have a relationship with Jesus. We want to bring hope and say, hey, don't you shouldn't do this. God is not going to be pleased with this. We want to put that out there. But at the same time, we have to understand that 
that is the world that we're in. My last p- question for you on your thoughts on this, because I have a different view on this aspect of the conversation too, is um, a lot of people like in the church for those general positions, for example, only want those to be like exclusive to like, if not Christians, but like people that clearly aren't on, I guess, the fringes of sin or like can be identified as such. Mm-hmm. I have a difference of opinion with that. Personally, I don't mind certain people. Like if, it, if I had a church of that size and you needed someone to do certain services and things, what they choose to do outside of that is not that I wouldn't be concerned about, but I wouldn't be on the side of like discriminating for someone doing something that isn't related to like the spiritual activity, the specific activity function of that body. So oh, like a janitor, for instance. Saying. Yeah, like, a janitor, a secretary. Is that really huh. like I don't get I don't know why it's such a big deal for like a lot of believers. Like, and maybe it's a personal conviction that I don't get. Maybe it's that's just a, or a maybe it's a point. fear yeah. that they have. Maybe it's a homophobia or something. But for me, it's like I want people who are from those different communities to come to my church. I would I want them. I want sinners to come to my church. I want people from different experiences in life to come to my church. And even in some capacities, I do want them to partake and participate and help out with things. And so I I think that's maybe a difference in me. Maybe it's from where I am. I'm not from the South. So maybe it's a different energy. Like even some of the things you were sharing, like some of the stuff is uniquely like the word simp isn't really in the Midwest like that. You were talking about that earlier. Yeah. Certain things is more regional. So like I didn't hear the word simp until after, like in college, Yeah, which so... That yeah, was we was calling each other simps in middle school. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that's a really interesting. I didn't even think about that. Like, could there be ministry that happens if you hire someone that's not a Christian, or not just not just not a Christian, but like you hire somebody to be a janitor or, or whatever, and and in a, in a ministry position or a nonprofit position? That's a whole another. I didn't, I didn't even think about that. I I, I think that's an interesting point. Um, I think by and large, folks should be able to hire who they want to hire, right? Uh, but at the same time, you, you know, we in the same way you wouldn't want somebody who's black discriminated. I'm pretty sure that someone that's coming from that lifestyle is probably not going to want to be discriminated either. Exactly. So I, th- I think I think, yeah, th- I think it's way more nuanced than we want to make it out to be. I'm just on some like, look, right now is the Church of Jesus Christ in America known for being the hands and feet of Jesus? Yes or no? Mm-hmm. Is that what it we're known for? <laughs> right. Like, if we're honest, in the chat, in the comments, is that what we're known for? Are we known for being the hands and feet of Jesus on this side of eternity? Are we known for Matthew 25, caring for the least of these? Are we known for caring for the widow and the orphan? Is that what we're known for? And would it change our influence and our impact on the world if that was what we were known for? If whenever a problem happened, we were the first to be the ones to provide solutions, to provide resources, to provide health, would that earn us maybe more favor? Right. That's just that is just something, um, something to think about. So what I'm going to do is I'm always going to push Christians or followers of Jesus. Let's be known by the things that we're for. Let's be known by being the hands and feet of Jesus. Let's be known by loving our neighbors ourselves. Let's be known by caring for the widow and the orphan. Let's be known by caring for the single moms. Let's be known by right, like yo, we did. You're you're in the hood, but if you're going through it, this church over here, they got a benevolence fund. They'll take care of you. If churches were more more known by that, maybe it wouldn't be as much of an issue, which is why I, I, I don't hate on a Mike Todd from Transformation Church for that. When they do that, I celebrate it and I applaud it. And I think it's awesome. You know what I'm saying? But it, but if it was more of a regular thing and when people thought follower of Jesus, Christian, church, when people thought of that, they thought resource, abundance, um, help. Uh, this is where I go to get financial literacy. This is where I go when I'm when I'm about to be homeless, right? And they'll help out. And and you know, if a church uh, and transformation is able to do it, and they do a killer job doing it, and they give away millions and millions of dollars. Uh, but what if that happened on a smaller scale? What if more mega churches were known by that? Churches with 10, 20, 30 million dollar budgets were giving back five million, 10 million, three million dollars into the communities. Um, and, and it was it was like a national revival that happened in this regard. I feel like these wouldn't be the issues that we're having. I feel like most folks would be um I don't agree with you, you weirdo Christian followers of Jesus, but gosh darn it, I cannot deny that you are some of the most loving people on the face of this earth. And even though I really don't like the Bible and what you preach, 
by and large, man, you guys are the salt of the world. You're the light of the world. Um, we're going to go ahead and just leave y'all alone, right? Like, I don't know. Maybe I'm too optimistic. Maybe I'm, 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 I'm too hopeful, May, right? But it doesn't seem like that's been our identity in the last 50 or 100 years. Joshua the king came down and bore it all. Yeah. Conversations front of the fireplace. All of my mistakes out of wire race. Wanna operate at a higher pace. Birth pains causing the body to dilate. On a first name basis with the worst pain. 